All right, so we're going to create a simple cast bar, oh, a cast time ability. <clears throat> so first things first, we have to create a sub a child class of our main gameplay ability, right? So whatever you're using, create a subclass of it and name it whatever you want, but I, I named it gameplay ability underscore with cast time, right? Okay, after that, here are the functions we need. Uh, first, we the constructor, obviously, and we're going to override activate ability. And if you don't have autocomplete, here's all the stuff so you can copy it. All right. And then we're going to have a start casting, which we can make a blueprint callable. Then on casting starter, which is a blueprint implementable event. On finish casting, which is we don't we don't need to expose it. On casting succeeded, which is a blueprint native event. And then get function start get section start time, which takes in a section name and a play rate. And then this can this can be blueprint probable, but we never call it on blueprint, so it doesn't really matter. You can delete that. Okay, and then we need some variables, which you need a U ability to ask wait delay. This comes with Unreal, so you definitely have it. So that's a, that's going to be our task to wait for the delay of the cast. And then you can you can have a float for a cast time. I don't use this as a float. I use it as something else. So I will we'll, we'll explain it when we get there. And you don't need these two. So these two are just for me because I handle it different, right? So my cast time is based on animation. That's why I need a an F name for the section of the of the montage. So I know how long the animation how long the cast is gonna be. And then this message tag is so I can send a message to my UI to spawn my cast, my cast bar itself, right? Okay, so then we go the CPP side of it. So I do this on my constructor. We have to wait delay. Set it to null pointers, yes, construct it normally. And then my message tag, I guess set it to that. It just that's what my message tag's gonna be. You don't you don't have to do this. That's the way I do stuff. Okay, activate ability. So instead of calling super activate ability, we want to override whatever I was doing before. Because everything I was doing before is for different kinds of abilities that don't have casts, right? And then we're just gonna call start casting. So when we start casting, we get the cast time. This cast time is from this function right here, which is, so we get our montage. So whatever montage we're gonna play, this you and a montage pointer. Usually, so is this, right? Whatever you, you plug into your play montage wait for event. And then we get the composite sections. So all the sections this montage has. So by sections, it means all these purple lines right here. So this is a section, this is a section, right? And then it's gonna grab all of them. And then you're gonna, it's gonna compare with the section name that you passed. And if it's true, it's gonna get the time, the absolute time in the montage, right? So the absolute time, if you scroll here, you can see a, a float and a percentage. The float is the time. So it would return 0 0.84, right? That is the time it's going to return. But I need to scale it by my attacks, uh, by my cast speed, right? Because I'm passing the rate as cast speed, so I also need to scale it by my play rate. That's why I divide it. I divide whatever it returns by my play rate. And that will give me the scaled time of that montage section. Right? Scale time of this this purple line right here. Okay, so we got our cast time. We're good. This is just to spawn my cast bar, right? Uh there's many ways to do this, so it's up to you. 
I use the gameplay message subsystem, which comes with Lyra and is very nice to use, very easy to use. You get it, but that's another another video. Okay, and then we start the ability task wait delay, right? We start it. The only ability is this, obviously, you know, whatever ability is getting called on, and the cast time is whatever cast time every it returns. We set it. And then we bind on finish to our on finish casting. So this is a, a delegate. We add it to on finish casting. And then we activate, we start the task, right? So ready for activation means, okay, you're ready to activate, go start the cast. Go start the, the task, I mean. And then we call on cast and start it. On cast and start it. So you can implement this in C++, but I think binding all of these little delegates in C++ is too much work. So I just sent it to, uh, to Blueprint because that's what it, why we use Unreal, right? So we can make our life easier. Okay, so on casting started, we play the montage. We scale it by our cast speed. In my case, obviously, if you're not doing this, it would just look like one, right? And then uncompleted is going to end, or planned out is going to end. And when it gets into this, is very important. You have to have different logic when it gets interrupted and canceled. Because if you get interrupted or canceled, that means the ability failed, right? So you want to stop the cast time. So the visual cast time, right? And then I send another message to my UI telling it, hey, you failed. Make it look like you failed. And that's it for here. There, obviously, there, there's really nothing else in this blueprint. It's just this. Okay. And then after that, this is the next thing that's going to trigger this unfinished event. So unfinished casting. We're going to call on cast and succeed it. So this on cast and succeed it gets called in. You can call it on blueprint. You can call it on blueprint. You can call it here. I just used it here. On cast and succeed it, we're going to actually commit the ability. Right. So we can apply the cooldown and the cost. So the, this commit does all that work. And if it doesn't get committed, we end the ability. But then, so this is just my base implementation of the cast time. So when I actually implement to an actual ability, right? So let's go to it. Uh, this is my Ember Burst ability, which is a child of with cast time, right? So And then we override the on cast to succeed it. We call the super. So it does, it does the same stuff that it just did. So it, it commits the ability, right? So we don't have to redo it here. And then I spawn my projectiles, right? So I get my projectile count. And then this, all this stuff, fancy mouse to, to spread my projectiles in, in a cone, right? And that's it. That is, this gets called when the casting is finished. So that means I'm going to show you how it looks. So we're going to start casting. We can cancel it, right? We can cancel the ability and it looks like that. And then we can not cancel it and... Oh, I have a lot of projectiles on. But yeah. When the ability ends, when the cast time ends, it spawns the projectiles. And it works for everything. As you can see, they're all different cast times, obviously, because we're scaling about the animation. And that's about it. If you have any questions, just ask in the comments. All right, good luck.